So good morning, everybody. Let me start by removing these uh, nice tunes in the background. We're improving on a, on a day by day basis, on a week by week basis, I would say. So um, as of now, we also have some waiting music. It's not always going to be classical music. So maybe next time you might be putting up some uh, heavy metal to, uh, to get uh, uh, started in any case. Uh, good morning um, uh, to everybody. Good morning uh, to you, uh, Eddie, as well. Uh, welcome to this uh, already third Tuesday where we have our cybersecurity experts from home. Uh, today is going to be an interesting day because it's the first of uh, another uh, two series of uh, webinars that we're going to have. Um, today, I think we're going to be able to see both on the industrial side how cybersecurity is developing, but also on the way that uh, we are experiencing cybersecurity from home. Um, we have uh, many different cybersecurity experts also from home, and uh, we're also honored to have Eddie Willems here today to uh, talk to us about uh, stalkerware. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the things that we do, uh, we are an association of IT security companies that have been around for about uh, two decades, uh, bringing together expertise from both vendors, academia, and, and users in uh, uh, discussion panels, uh, either face-to-face, -face, but in the ongoing uh, corona situation. And probably for the next uh, half year, we'll be continuing with our uh, webinars um, as we see that this has actually quite a lot of uh, interest and impact also from the community, uh, both today, this morning, and also afterwards, because this session is being recorded and will be published afterwards on our website. We have um, many different activities that we do, amongst other uh, these types of events, uh, to uh, create awareness in the market, but also to bring together interests uh, from the community in terms of um, information, in terms of uh, uh, innovation, uh, trying to work out on new ways to uh, come up with cybersecurity challenges. And, uh, and try to find uh, also the necessary solutions. We do that both locally uh, in Belgium, as well as internationally with quite a number of European uh, projects that we work on. One of those is um, um, the lead topic that we do on cybersecurity for robotics, which is a, a main topic, specifically in the domain of uh, industry, but also in other types of um, uh, robot systems, both in the house as well as, for instance, for medical purposes. So the baseline there is do not trust your robots. Um, and I think uh, that says uh, already quite a lot. Um, a couple of words in relation to these uh, webinars. Uh, so we have the series at Tuesday morning, which are the cybersecurity experts from home on topics that are related to cybersecurity uh, as such, but also innovations in cybersecurity. And last week we started with 5G cybersecurity that will continue next week with business opportunities uh, in 5G together with the, uh, the CISO of uh, Orange, um, talking about new developments, new uh, business opportunities that they see with uh, cybersecurity for 5G. And then uh, today uh, at noon, we have uh, two speakers. Uh, we shortened the webinar of last week a little bit down uh, because we noticed that it could actually be quite long having a webinar of about two and a half, nearly three hours. So today we'll be focusing on one hour, uh, one hour and a half max and then uh, specifically with um, Sentinel-1 and Secudea, uh, two experts in the domain, in any case, to uh, enlighten us about their activities. Uh, later on this week, we'll continue with our uh, sessions on Thursday on identity and access management. Uh, we had just before uh, Sven Paulus working on some of his um, preparation work for the next uh, Thursday morning at nine on uh, identity and access management, um, how that's actually developing and evolving also when you don't have that much uh, new systems around. So uh, coming from legacy in uh, Active Directory or LDAP and then uh, moving towards uh, new systems and new types of identity uh, in the 21st century. And then during noon, we'll be talking about um, uh, the cookie policy. So how to deal with um, uh, privacy GDPR in the world of uh, cookies on websites. So, or putting it in reverse, how to deal with cookies, cookie consent management in the world of uh, GDPR. But for now, um, I'm happy to hand over the microphone and, the, uh, uh, and also the video to um, uh, our guest speaker who is uh, working also from home. Um, Eddie, I hope you're still around. Yes, you are. I'm heading over to you. So, and I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen here uh, and give you the floor. Eddie, um, what is stalkerware? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we are going to discuss today, isn't it? <laughs> 
Um, okay, can you all see my Not screen? Yet. No. But I think in a couple of seconds we will. Yeah, I hope. Are you working from home, Eddie? Because it seems... So, there okay. it is. Yeah, yeah now we can <laughs> see your screen. Okay, you have yes, to already. Working, yeah, I'm working from home for about 12 years already. So this is not the new element for me, actually. It's uh, daily work. <laughs> the only problem is, of course, that I can't go to events. And that's really a problem for me. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, good morning, or maybe good afternoon, or maybe good night, depending on when you will see this. Um, so hello, everybody. Uh, today we are going to see uh, something I've given about a couple of uh, weeks ago, just before the, the pandemic of Corona started actually. And this is uh, actually the second time I will give this uh, during um, uh, something like a webinar conference or whatever you call it. So we're going to have a look at the spy inside all of us, because maybe we are maybe already using some of those kind of things uh, we are going to talk about today. Anyway, um, just um, a very important. Um, just uh, a couple of notes uh, about who am I and who is my company. Uh, so I'm working with Data. I'm not going to give a lot of uh, things about this, but I think uh, a lot of people know us already. We um, seen as the first antivirus solution in the world, actually. Um, that's actually according to Wikipedia. And actually, we have a very nice office. If you are able to come to our offices in Bochum, which is just across the, coast, uh, across the border, actually, in, um, between Belgium and uh, Germany, it's actually very nice. Uh, we have a, a very big old building over there, which is actually completely renovated. And if, actually, if you are a, a Star Trek uh, lover or whatever, a fan, then I think you should definitely come because uh, if you come to our, you know, just re registration desk in, in, in the beginning, then something like that. It's like the bridge, you know. <laughs> so I think it's um, maybe worth a visit if you are around. Anyway, uh, something about me. Uh, for the people who don't know me yet, uh, I could say just Google me. That's more than enough. I've been uh, about 30 years in the industry, wrote several books. These are the books, actually. <laughs> Um, and the last one is maybe the interesting one because that's still out. It's cyber danger and you can still buy it from Amazon or Bull.com or Standard, whatever you have uh, and you want. Um, I have very good news as well because I am working on a second book, actually. I'm working on a, on a, on a science fiction cyber thriller which is possibly going to be published around uh, September, October. This is brand new, so uh, nobody knows this yet, so this is premiere. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go to the real thing. Enough about me, enough about um, uh, Gdata. Of course, you can always ask me about that afterwards. But let's go, first of all, to, to the real thing. Um, this is, um, let us say, uh, a picture from uh, a statistic actually from AV test organization, uh, one of the testers we are daily dealing with and which are uh, actually testing our products and all the security products in the world. And uh, these are the official numbers over there. Actually, we are, we are over 800 million samples at this moment uh, about uh, malware. And uh, we, have some, we are receiving something like 400,000 uh, new samples a day, which is a lot. Um, the only problem is, of course, that most of them is invisible and because most of them have some like money gain um, underneath. There is, of course, one example and that's ransomware, which is, of course, very visible and that's the 0.1 percent actually. Uh, but it's, it's now counting for something like 1 percent a, a day. But that's not where we are going to talk about. Actually, we're going to talk about today about something very, very small, something like a very, very, very small percentage, maybe 0.001% 0, 0 of all of it. But it's a very important one to discuss because nobody is nearly talking about, and that's one of the reasons I am going to talk about, um, except a couple of other people, of course, which are doing this at this moment already as well. So let's uh, first of all 
let's talk about, first of all, spyware, because we are going to have a look about some specific, um, let's say, uh, version of spyware just after a, a couple of minutes. Um, so spyware is malware that aims to gather information from your person or organization, sometimes without their knowledge and sometimes, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's something which is completely invisible, but it's of course stealing that data. And it's a very uh, typical thing that everybody is, um, well, everybody should know about. Uh, however, what we are going to talk about today is something like uh, a subset of spyware. By the way, if you have questions, if you have something like that, just keep them and we are going to deal with them at the end of the presentation. So today we're going to talk about Stalkerware. And what is Stalkerware? Well, this is the official kind of, well, kind of uh, definition. Stalkerware is monitoring software or spyware that um, is used for stalking. The term actually was coined when people started to widely use commercial spyware to spy on their spouses or intimate partners. Of course, that's a very specific definition and you would possibly will say, oh, well, oh, we don't see something like that. Well, of course, it's not that visible and that's part of the problem. So let's have a look to what I call the Starkers Cyber Toolkit. It's interesting because you possibly will see something you are maybe using already today. And that's maybe the interesting part because you could be or could become a stalker of your wife or your wife could be become a stalker of you uh, or whatever, or your partner. So let's have a look at it. So I think everybody knows this because this is of course a very known, um, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, camera, uh, the ring. Um, so everybody, a lot of people are actually using this today. So this is actually part of the toolkit of a stalker. But we have loads of other cameras and a lot of them are really hidden in a lot of devices these days. It looks like a video recorder or whatever. Now this is not a video recorder or, what, or, or something like a, a, t a TV box or something like that. No, it is actually a camera. This is not a cable, well, it is a cable actually, but this is a camera. If you look very carefully in the middle, there is something like a special black front and that's a camera. This is a camera. It's also a clock, of course. So it's very interesting to have this in, in your uh, sleeping room. I don't, yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, this is a camera, exactly. So. <laughs> It's, 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 uh, these are devices being used, of course, by stalkers. This is not a camera. Um, this is, of course, uh, an audio device where you can capture sounds from along a very far distance. So stalkers are also using this. Uh, this is a, a, a tracker, a tracker where you can track, of course, your uh, car with. And this is the most important. Uh, how should I say it, toolkit from the stalker. This is, well, the partner's phone. And that's the problem. And that's where the problem is. And that's where stalkerware is installed on. So, so features of stalkerware. Let's have a, well, let's have a good look into it. It's firstly installed on, well, you can install it on everything. It's mostly installed on Android, sometimes iOS, Windows, Mac OS, so actually most of the the, the, the consumer, you know, uh, stuff we have. It stays hidden, it's completely hidden, it's completely operating in the background. So uh, the problem is that it has access to just everything, completely everything on your device. It can also video, start up video and voice recordings because of course there is a, a, there is a mic and there is of course a camera on your device. It can steal just nearly everything from your device. And of course it can share sensitive information with the third party or the installer of the software. So this is one of the, well, the, the features of Stalkerware in short. But if you look into uh, the other stuff, uh, if you look to Stalkerware, Spyware, and parental control, we see a lot of overlaps. So Stalkerware, one of the interesting things that is, is, is that it needs to be manually installed. So, so you need to have physical access. 
Instead with normal spyware, which we all know, um, is, it's automatically installed via exploits, mail, social engineering, whatever, um, security flaws. And if you look to it to parental control, well, that's coming very close, actually. It's also manually installed. Um, it's easily found on the, inter in, in, on the internet, actually. Um, that's a little bit different with spyware because it's found in the underground. Uh, but it has exactly the same thing as parental control stuff. It's also easily found on the internet. Um, Stalkware, it's mostly supplied as a service. Now, if you look to spyware, it has its own service. You can say that it is supplied as a service in some way, but uh, it depends. Sometimes it's not, uh, sometimes it is. Uh, parental control, well, it's normally not available over there. Um, there are some of them who are doing that, but yeah. Most of the interesting thing is, is, that, it's, is that the legal status of stalkerware is very vague. Uh, and it uh, depends off, um, you know, every country. We go into detail about that a little bit later on. Uh, spyware is, of course, illegal all over the world. And um, we have, of course, parental control, which is, of course, the legal, um, is, is, of course, legal all over the world. Um, the problem is, and that's the most important one, it's that Starkware is really invading the privacy without user knowledge. Um, and, and, and there's the difference with parental control. If you look to the other side of the screen, you will see that parental control should impose lots of restrictions, but is definitely visible to the user because it will pop, give some pop-up screens or whatever. So there are a lot of notifications all around over there with parental control, but uh, if you look to Stalkerware, it's completely silent. It's exactly the same thing it was as as Spyware is doing. So that's that the difference. So let's uh, let's have a look. Uh, go on further. Is um, Stalkerware really so special? Um, you don't know if you can see this movie. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Okay. I'm not going to show it completely. This is. Stalkerware, well, recorded in 2005. This was, look at this, this is me 15 years ago. Yeah, well, so um, anyway, so what you see, what you saw over here, is that stalkware already existed in 2005 and they came over me they came to my house to just to find out what is stalkware so it's a, an old thing actually uh it's a very old thing the only thing not everybody is talking about however there are exceptions eva goldbrin has a very very good pep talk about it so if you've listened to my talk i should be saying well have a listen to her talk uh, because actually what we are describing is, is, is the problematic thing. It's the problematic part of the malware we see these days. It's, we are not talking about it, but now we are talking much more about it because we are more privacy aware. Privacy about 15 years ago, well, of course it was existing, but not, not nobody was actually talking about it. Now everybody is talking about it because with all the you know, the Google and the Facebook things, uh, concerns and everything what we see these days, it's of course a logical uh, behavior. So that's possibly the reason why you will see in the next years, actually more and more um, important presentations like mine and like Elva Galbrin's presentation. And these are all about, about, about stalkerware, the phenomenon stalkerware. So it's actually what I call better timing to talk about it these days. Of course, uh, so the definition of stalkerware from a technical point of view, it's apps that share sensitive user data with the installer. It's a little bit different than what we really see, so uh, you can read it. So, and it's apps that present themselves actually as a spying or a secret surveillance solution. That's how the, they present themselves. And they are apps that actually are capable of tracking users and monitoring user behavior. That's actually what we already discussed. So, uh, let's have a look to the stalkerware promotion and the advertising. I, I love this point, uh, this, uh, this chapter actually. 
So commercial spy is actually advertised in, in this way via online barriers and social media uh, very aggressively. It's actually, a, a, we call it commercial spyware. Actually. So advertised on social media, actually sometimes by bloggers and also commercial spyware developers uh, are sometimes using uh, SEO techniques. So um, actually stalker can very easily be found uh, if you do a, an internet search. Uh, it's not really that difficult. Um, so there are definitely a lot of dedicated landing pages. So let's have a look to the, to the real stuff. Let's have a look to some of um, the examples we have over here. So this is one of them. So if you really see this is a Heister mobile, um, actually if you look at it, it's like, yeah, predicting and stuff like, this is a cell phone monitoring for parents and employers. That's how they show themselves to the public. And you really see the, you know, for parents, uh, you, you see different uh, notifications in, 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 in down in the screen for parents, for yourself. And then it comes on something very interesting for employers. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So of course you can use this kind of uh, software, malware, for well, spying on your employees. And there it becomes very interesting. So it's not only you no know, for well, let's say um, spying uh, for your partners, but it also in, in, could be interesting, it seems, for spying for your, onto your employees. This is another one. This is Hoover Watch. Um, it's also, you can see it's uh, showing all the Android features over here, stealth mode, record calls, you have a, a, a good overview. Uh, actually, if you type in those names, you will find those web pages. Maybe they are already uh, changed a little bit, but still they all exist. Um, so you can easily find them. Um, this is a very interesting one because the one I've been interviewed about uh, 15 years ago uh, was about FlexiSpy. And FlexiSpy still exists. And if you see how they um, yeah, market themselves, the world's most powerful monitoring software for computers, mobile phones, and uh, well, etc. So you see, it's 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 um, they show themselves up just monitoring software, but it's much 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 more because there is a big business model uh, behind it, of course, as well. Um, so the big business model behind them is, of course, the pricing, because it's a service. Everything. Um, which is which I have been shown to you at this moment as a price. It's not that expensive. So most of them uh, have a price from like 25 euros a month, um, like uh, that you pay for it because it's um, putting all the data which it captures from the device and it's putting all that data on, of course, uh, a cloud um, uh, server, which they own, of course. And that's how it works. That's, that's also very problematic because it could be also a very tricky part because it can be hacked. We'll talk about that later on. So how to install Stalker? Well, that's, that's the good part. It should be installed manually um, because it's not that easy to install it. Now, if you think this is too complex for me because Possibly all the people uh, which are looking at this at this moment possibly are able to do them by themselves. However, most of the normal people which are using this, the, uh, these kind of things are not doing this by themselves because it's sometimes very complex because you need to root the device sometimes or you need to have some administration permissions. And that's not that easy. So they give it to you. So this is, for instance, the page from FlexiSpy where they offer it to you for only $39, come on, why not, you know? Um, so it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and even if you think, uh, so that's how it works actually. Um, it, it's very, you can just chat with them and then they're going into the process of routing or jailbreaking the, uh, the, the whole device, if it is necessary. Sometimes it is not. So some of the stuff can be installed very easily. Of course, it's on a, on a Windows machine or a, a Mac system. It can be installed without um, those things uh, if you are an administrator of the system. But most of, well, yeah, most of the people are administrators of, of their own system, except if it's on, um, on a network um, and um, 
well, yeah. Um, so this is this is so uh, how it can be done. Uh, in in uh, it, it's it's a very strange strange system. But of course, it's logical that they are going to do something like this. Now, what about iOS? Because a lot of people uh, say to me, well, it can't be installed on iOS. Yes, it can, but it's a much longer process. Um, of course, iOS is much more closer, so it's not always there. If you have the latest version of iOS, uh, it is not that easy. Uh, of course, there is a possible way that it needs to be jailbroken, so that's another thing. Uh, or, of course, mobile device managers being used to put it on the machine. So, because that's always another possibility to uh, use that. So they have actually, um, they show mostly on their webpage that it can be done easily. So this is for instance, uh, one of the, the pages and it, it uh, from I think one of the examples we've shown now before. And this is actually what is shown if you go to the iOS page of that, uh, of one of those um, um, malware. So this is actually a, some, a, an overview about, you know, a lot, a, some of those um, apps. It's not uh, only this, because I'm showing now only, what is it, um, 12 names or whatever. It's much more. Uh, we have 50, 60, uh, we have one, more than 100 actually names um, and, and apps which uh, can be um, uh, used like that. So, one other question which is possibly popping up, is Starkware available in official app stores? I can tell you in the beginning, yes. Um, actually, we are busy with a paper together with uh, Avast, Avast um, about this. So we have seen already Starkware available on the official app stores. However, um, Google and also uh, Apple is uh, moving those apps very um, uh, shortly after they published it mostly out of the stores. So they are removed very quickly. Uh, how much uh, we have at this moment is very difficult to say, but um, they are sometimes available in the official app stores. But most of them are available actually on, um, yeah, on the websites if you do a, 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 just a search for it. So um, then, Maybe interesting is also to know who are the most affected countries uh, by stalkerware. Now, if you look to this, these are just our figures. These are also compared with other figures from other companies. Um, and then we always see the like, well, these uh, countries popping up. If you let out Germany, actually, there is a rare coincidence. It looks like uh, the Corona pandemic more or less actually. Why could that be? Well, they have a lot of people over there, but still, maybe they are, you know, very, oh, well, yeah, I don't know. There are maybe some uh, psychological reasons for that. Um, maybe people um, are, yeah, more into that uh, in Italy, UK, France, and Spain. I don't know. Uh, this, uh, we don't have any research done on that yet. Uh, another country which is also quite high in the statistics, but we're not mentioning it over here, is the US. Um, I will come into that uh, in one of the next slides, actually. So then we come to a very important thing. How is it about the status, um, about the legal status of Starkware in the countries? Well, and there's the problem. In some of our uh, in some of the countries in the world, it seems that this kind of monitoring software seems to be legal. Um, so, and they are really, really balancing or, you know, they're really working on a very thin line. Um, uh, some countries are, you know, um, try to stop more or less these kind of uh, applications, but it is very, very difficult because of course, there could be a legitimate use to use this kind of monitoring software, for instance, to monitor, monitor your children. It could be. However, what we see over here is that it's, of course, not being done. It is being used for different kind of purposes. So it's, uh, and that's the problem. And that's also what I want to say. Um, you know, if 
even if some of those companies are watching this kind of um, webinar at this moment, I can't do anything about it because it is vague. It is very, yeah. So <laughs> if um, legal um, if legal departments are would like to be or taking actions about this, it's it's not that easy. So that's part of the whole problem. But what really is worrying me are the next examples I will show you. And these are examples which were put up in the press about a couple of months ago. And this is for me worrying. Um, like this one. Barclays installs Big Brother style spyware on employees' computers. Oh man. <laughs> well, I can say this is completely illegal in Belgium. You know, this is, it seems that it's not completely illegal in some other countries, but this is worrying me. This is another thing. One in 10 Americans use stalkerware to track partners. Oh my God. If, if I watched this popping up, I thought, what is, is, is this really true? I took contact with um, some other companies in the States and actually they are telling me exactly the same thing. It is, it seems to be very popular. So more popular than we think. Um, I am not sure which my public is today, but maybe you're using already an app to track your children. Well, think about it. Maybe it could be one of them, which is also can be misused to, to do some other things. So think about that maybe, because there is that thin line. But this is also worrying me. A stalker app leaked data from thousands of victims. Come on, this is actually what I'm really worried about. Because if you are, you know, putting all those data on the cloud somewhere, and of course it's not like uh, Microsoft or another big company which is protecting themselves very, very well, then of course it can be hacked very easily. Um, so yeah, and this has been done before. And this has been done already. So this is not going into the right direction. And if you see something like this, Stalkerware developer demands TechCrunch because the former article was published on TechCrunch to remove the article detailing its leaking of sensitive data. Now think about that. This is definitely not a good thing because this is going too far, you know? This is really asking to put away that article, which is actually completely true. There is nothing special about it, but because this is limiting the press, what the press is saying. So um, this developer is demanding their friends to remove the article. Um, yeah, but anyway, so uh, this is not going into the, the good direction in my opinion, but yeah. It's, it's, this is evolution. Uh, this is the evolution we see these days with stalkerware. So let's have a look to the solutions. Let's have a look to the technical challenges and what, what can you do? There are some things everybody can do. Um, so first of all, let's have a, a look to uh, the cybersecurity solutions. Um, so first of all, like I, I was telling you, um, Stalkerware is sometimes considered legal in some countries because it's, um, like I was saying, a very legal, a, a very tricky thing to define. And it seems to be not identified as malware. However, many security products detect it. So we, a lot of products actually are detecting it, but mostly are detecting it as we, what we call PUAS or potentially unwanted applications. Uh, sometimes you have to check on that checkbox to detect it. So that's uh, something you need to do if you want to detect, to detect something like that. Now, this is the case for if you have something installed on Windows or Mac OS or something like that. But uh, it's different if you have, for instance, an Android phone or an uh, iPhone. And it's, of course, different. And, of course, um, there are a lot of uh, companies which are also detecting those kind of uh, apps um, via their security solutions. And let's go to the next uh, slide. 
So, uh, for the security industry, uh, there is a technical challenge as well. Um, the security apps are not easy uh, to remove because you need, if you, well, on a Windows machine, it's quite easy because, you know, um, that's definitely an antivirus product can do that. But on an Android uh, um, phone or an iPhone, it's not that easy because you need to have um, uh, the administration permissions on, um, on, on, on that machine, which is not always that easy. So you need to have the possibility to remove, to remove a privileged app, what we call it. Uh, for that, you need so administrator rights and, um, of course, also those apps, those, let us say, stalkerware can also interact with the security app. So we can try to uninstall it. That's also a possibility, actually. It's not that well, also um, easy because a lot of security apps are also having privileged uh, permissions, actually, as well. So um, the problem is the more security apps will be detect stalkerware, the more difficult it will be, uh, it will be to detect um, the, uh, the stalkerware. So it, and, and that's a problem. So because there will be more obfuscated and more packed. So, and that's a problem. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant about this, but, um, but yeah, what can you do about it? This is a typical technical uh, challenge we always uh, coming up with at some point with uh, other software as well. Now, what can you do? Of course, if you have your phone, because that's the most important uh, thing to protect, um, because Windows and Mac OS can be easily protected by uh, a security application. The only thing you need to be to checking out, of course, is that you try to find out that you can see that there is no interaction or that your uh, antivirus application doesn't, um, well, wasn't uninstalled or something like that. So, but that's something you can uh, try to find out. Now, what you can do over here is protect actually the access to your device. That's um, um, it's easily it's it's more easily said than done um, because a lot of people are very well are not that careful with their phones actually or sometimes leave their phones um, on, on a table. Of course, we all have um, a fingerprint or whatever. Well, anyway. That's not always the case. Uh, don't share passwords and fingerprints. I've seen uh, fingerprints from other people uh, being used on the same phone. Don't do that. Um, that's, uh, that's not secure. You all know that, but yeah, I've talking to, I've, I've given this presentation in another situation and people were looking at me, oh, really? You know what I mean? So install a security app because it can, of course, um, detect um, these uh, malicious apps. Um, if suspicion, call your security vendor because your security vendor can actually find out if um, this kind of stalkerware is installed on your Android or iPhone eventually. We have, also, we have procedures to find out. And above all, get in touch with stopstalkaware.org. This is, this is something I come back on to this, uh, just uh, within the next slide, I think. So, um, I can, uh, so just hold on. And definitely reach out to the police because if this is found on your machine, it is possibly to, well, it, it is possibly misusing your data already. So um, this is something you need to, um, talk about with the police force, the local police force, who should be aware of it. That's another thing. Uh, but anyway, um, so um, now let's have a look to this initiative. This is the stopstalkerware.org. Actually, this organization is actually uniting some security forums, uh, firms, actually, um, some software developers, uh, some groups, uh, some organization which tries to eliminate this kind of abusive technology. And they form actually a coalition against Stalkerware. Um, this is in case that uh, there is something going wrong. Because also what we um, think is going to happen is that uh, those Stalkerware, Stalkerware companies will maybe start procedures against, um, well, uh, the security companies, not only security companies, but also maybe other people talking about it. 
could be even me. Um, so that's the reason why this organization is existing. Uh, these are the, um, the um, um, organizations or companies are, uh, which are uh, started with it, um, this uh, Stop Stalker Red Dot organization. Um, but there will be more um, organizations and companies joining this initiative. I think it's a very interesting one uh, because we are showing to the public actually at this moment, we're trying to show by giving presentation what is going on and how to stop it in some kind of way. Um, and that's more or less it. So this uh, was everything about Stalkerware at this moment. We are doing much more research at this moment about this. We know it is a very small part of the malware we see, but I think it stays an important part which we need to look into much more in the future. Because if it continues like this, then I think we could have a very big problem popping up. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Eddie. That was uh, definitely insightful. Um, I've been pulling a bit the, the participants to find out how much of experience that they have with, uh, with um, uh, this type of spyware. And uh, I'll share with you the results. And as you can see, luckily, none of uh, the participants that, uh, that has uh, given them an, an indication here has had, had ever had an issue with, uh, with Stalkerware or with, uh, with spyware in, in that sense. So yeah. that's, uh, uh, in any case, a good thing. I think it's the uh, zero dot zero 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 and so forth uh, percentage that you were mentioning, likely. Now, um, it, it is having, a good thing. <laughs> that's, uh, that's definitely a good thing. Now, um, I also asked the question, okay, uh, have you been spying? And none of the uh, respondents gave an answer to that. But I think it's actually <laughs> quite quite easy to, uh, to do this. Eh? And, uh, and probably we have, um, at least I have, uh, honestly said, uh, tried it a couple of times to see, okay, what can we do? And uh, what are the, uh, the possibilities uh, with, uh, with different surveillance cameras? In any case, uh, we are using surveillance cameras uh, both in the office and, and at home. So, um, and also knowingly that they can be hacked into. So that, that's quite for sure. Now, I think it's, it's sometimes a bit of a, of a challenging uh, perspective. What is surveillance and what is, uh, what is spying? Where do you draw the line? Uh, it's probably something that is uh, to be considered here as well. So can you draw the line? You, I, I think there are possibilities uh, to draw the line um, because, you know, if it's being used to, for stalking, then it's of course over the line. <laughs> um, if, and, and then it's very also very difficult to draw the line, uh, well, in, in, in some way to say, yeah, okay, but are you spying uh, or is my, are you checking your wife or something, what she is doing or your partner, what he is doing or she is doing, whatever. Um, it, it is always very difficult. Actually, um, my wife doesn't like it. My wife, so we also have uh, security cameras over here. Um, and she, actually she doesn't like it. Um, she don't like it, especially because of that, because she, she's told me, well, actually, Eddie, you, you can misuse that, you know? And it's not only you, uh, I trust you, of course, but uh, it's maybe not you. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she, because I, I will not misuse it normally. Um, but you know, <laughs> it goes to the it goes to the cloud maybe, uh, and I put it somewhere on a server. Um, you know, and, and that's maybe the problem because if you put it on a server, it can be of course misused without your control. And that's well, at least now we have it on record that you said that you're not going to use it again, sir. Maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I definitely will not do it. <laughs> okay. So um, in, in the, uh, the different types of um, uh, malwares that, that you've investigated or that you've been uh, uh, investigating, um, yeah, I think many of those are very legit in terms of uh, uh, the software. You can uh, easily buy it online. And they are also legit in terms of uh, what type of purpose uh, do you have with it. If you want to use it as surveillance, if you want to maybe not so much spy on your kids, but at least um, uh, try to, to monitor where they are. So it purely in, in perspective of, uh, of security. Um, uh, that's, I think, always a bit of a challenge. Huh? This is, again, there as well. Where do you draw the line between um, the security versus the, uh, uh, the surveillance? And 
um, especially when we are concerned that the government is doing this. Um, I think here it's a really good example of how also we on a personal basis have to draw the line uh, for ourselves and to know that uh, we're not going to abuse um, those cameras against somebody else. Um, now, of course, again, there it's sometimes a bit of a challenge. Um, sometimes we have an experience like I had, uh, where we have um, people um, uh, in, in a renting situation and there were some, some challenges in the middle of the night. So there's a door camera system that we have, which is um, basically connected to, uh, uh, of course, an, an, a cloud environment. And it's so easy really to, uh, to spot, okay, what time have people left? What time did they return? Or did they leave, leave the, the door open? So um, those types of examples we can, uh, we can definitely see. And, and so uh, I generally have to say that uh, I've not been spying really, but I've been using it for uh, security purposes uh, for our own means. Okay. Um, are there any other types of uh, spyware and examples, uh, Eddie, that, uh, that we need to, uh, to look out for? Uh, so beyond the, the pure camera? Because I think there's also a lot of um, spyware going around, which is uh, simply uh, catching our keystrokes, is trying to record everything that uh, we say and do using our microphones. Uh, is it also something that you found in, in similar sp uh, spyware um, activities? Is it also considered a stalkerware? No, no, completely not. Um, so we clearly, you know, that's what we differentiate between those two. Uh, so spyware is the general term and is covering nearly every aspect of spying. And of course, then we see, of course, the keystroke grabbers or whatever, you know, we have, all, of course, that, that's the big part and, and that's being used by the cyber criminals. Um, so there's the, there's the, the big, big, big difference. Um, so that's, and that's the real spyware and that's installed automatically. Uh, this is really uh, spyware. This is like spyware you install on purpose, manually, to do something really possibly harmful. To draw, the, the, there is a line between you know, you know, your children trying to find out what your children are doing and trying to find out what your partner is doing. It's very easy because if you install an app which is looking at what your children are doing, there are a lot of pop-ups. It's, it's evasive. You, you can see it. You can see that you are, you know, doing something. And the child will also see that. So, but if you don't have those pop-ups, if you don't have those things, then you can consider it as real spyware. So maybe, maybe not this public, but maybe, uh, or it could be, of course, the later public is who are watching these kinds of videos, could be, could be thinking, oh my God, I am actually using something like that. Then think about it twice because it's maybe something you use and you think it's normal. And then of course you're going already too far into the, the wrong direction. But that's really the, the, where we draw the line. Of course, spyware on itself is much more, much more problematic than what we see over here. This is only a very, very small limited subset. Okay, a couple of um, um, questions before we round up here. Um, what, what's the type of um, usage that um, uh, criminals uh, have actually been using uh, these types of materials uh, for? Of course, we've um, learned from different friends and maybe we've experienced it ourselves. Um, I have a recording um, of you when you're sitting behind your laptop and you're looking at uh, any sort of uh, porn website. Um, and now I have a recording, I'm going to make it public uh, type of emails. Um, but, but how genuine are those types of uh, claims and have you really seen effects of these uh, taking up in, in, uh, uh, in, in real life? So what are people using the videos for? Oh, okay. Uh, the videos are being used. Yeah, this is a different thing. Uh, this is not like uh, the typical um, emails we all have and seen that, uh, of course, you uh, need to pay something like this amount of money because otherwise we show you what is going on. Uh, no, because this is what a typical cyber criminal is doing. The videos here, over here, which is uh, misused over here, is more like, okay, I'm showing you, uh, but you know, you're doing this, or you're doing that, or you're misusing my uh, children, which is actually maybe not true. Uh, but, you know, these are the things they are using. Um, this is really to stalk your partner, meaning that you are, you know, trying to, giving more information about him than he thinks or he thinks that you know. So meaning that you 
can complicate uh, maybe some some other um, workouts with your partner or ex-partner. We've seen most of the the problems related to ex-partners, so um, okay, that's going to be the, the the real category where everything of this kind of applications are popping up. Okay, well, thank you very much, Adi, for uh, sharing. Uh, that uh, that insight with us, and um, I will be definitely looking out for uh, for more spyware um, uh, dropping out. Um, is there a way that we can recognize uh, those those types of spywares? Um, uh, is the uh, are the antivirus systems uh, detecting that these types of um, uh, malwares have been installed on our systems uh, that you know? Yes and no. Uh, not everybody. <laughs> not yeah. Uh, that's their answer. And not every um, how should I say security company is detecting this. Um, most of them at this moment are detecting this as some kind of potentially wanted application. If it's on Windows, Mac OS, on uh, Android devices, um, we are able to detect this. Um, by uh, the security app which is installed. Um, and there we have also a very good uh, possibility to detect it. The only thing is it's not easy to get rid of it. On iOS, there is a big problem because we can't make uh, a security app, a real security app, which can scan inside uh, the operating system uh, from Apple. So that's uh, not allowed. Um, so uh, there we have a problem. How can you check it? How can you find this out? Well, you. The only thing to, to know about is if you think you have something like on, on your iPhone or even iPad, then just, well, you can try to uh, grab a phone and try to um, get in contact with your security company. That's a possibility. Okay, good. Good enough. Good. All right. Thank you very much, Eddie, again uh, for this. I, um, <clears throat> I actually also posted in the chat here that uh, those people who would be interested in visiting uh, the GData offices in uh, Bochum, uh, we have an event scheduled um, in September. So if, um, uh, if Corona doesn't forbid and if God allows, then uh, we're heading off uh, to uh, the G-Data uh, campus, uh, hopefully in 24th of September, uh, so shortly from here. And um, uh, those people who would be interested are definitely happily to, uh, invited to, to join in. Uh, just drop us a note at, uh, at LSIC and uh, we'll be considering that. And I think uh, you have um, some interesting things to share there with us, uh, amongst others, of course, the lab, of, amongst others, of course, the, uh, the top analysts that, uh, that you have within uh, GData, uh, showing a bit on the roadmap, where are we heading to, and some uh, real life examples of uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning techniques, uh, and how you're using this to, uh, to detect and to discover also uh, malware and uh, other types of uh, cybercrime activities. So again, uh, Eddie, thanks a lot for um, uh, your presence and your uh, early morning um, uh, session. And uh, thank you everybody uh, for joining in and for uh, listening in as well. We'll be um, uh, going back in uh, around noon for the next webinar of the day on industrial cybersecurity. And hopefully we'll see you again, again uh, there. And otherwise, uh, this recording will be made public in a uh, in short while. Thank you very much. and. Um, have a nice morning and uh, rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you all.